Uh, hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, back by popular demand, we have Jill Dalton from the Whole Food Plant-Based Cooking Show. She has a new book coming out. She's going to tell you all about it. You can actually pre-order it with the link that's right below in the show notes in the chat, and she's going to be making some recipes from it, including an Afghan Barani Banjan, and I think maybe even a vegan magic cookie bar please welcome her back to the show how have you been and what have you been up to oh gosh we've been busy just trying to get that cookbook done it took forever a whole year and a half it took us because we tried different ways of doing it kickstarter and we had a, a traditional publisher with our last cookbook but it didn't go that well for us so we decided to do it ourselves, which was quite the undertaking <laughs> <laughs> we did everything. We did all the photography, the the designing, the editing. Uh, oh my gosh! Yeah, it was it was a lot, but that that but it's all good. It's done. <laughs> well, fantastic! Congratulations! I'm sure everybody's going to order it. We can't wait to see it. You are in half. You could have almost had two babies. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh! No, I'm done. That part of my life is done. <laughs> I hope anyway. <laughs> Well, oh, fantastic. And are these recipes you're going to show us actually from the new book? Yes, they're both in the book. And these are a couple of Jeff's and my favorite recipes. This is actually probably one of Jeff's absolute favorites. He loves eggplant. It was a request from a, a friend of ours that's actually from Afghanistan. So it's a very traditional dish that we've just made into a healthier whole plant, you know, whole food plant based, no oil, all of that kind of stuff, because it's typically you know, eggplants typically fly, fried in oil, which they're super soakers. They just soak that oil up and you, that's really not necessary. Yeah, so, you are you are just so talented at taking the familiar favorite recipes and making them healthy. I think that's your superpower. You. Yeah. <laughs> Did, were you able to make cook this good before you were plant-based? Oh, no. I was a horrible cook. And I mean, Jeff, Jeff will definitely agree with you on that. And my kids too. I was not a good cook. It took me a long time to really, uh, to really get it down. And one thing for me, I was terrible at cooking meat. So that was just a, a godsend for me to not have to cook meat anymore. Cause it was just, I was horrible at it. So yeah, it took me a long time to really understand the flavors and how to, how to get depth of flavor into things. But, you know, I kind of have my core staples that I use and a lot of our dishes have, you know, use the same ingredients, but, you know, they taste different, but surprisingly, it's a very narrow uh, amount of ingredients, really. Yeah, well, you uh, you are, you do such a good job with, and you make your, your recipes are delicious, they're comforting, they're easy to make, and now we have a new book to look forward to. Yes, yes. All right, I'm, I'm going to just jump in because the if I'm going to get these two recipes done, we got to kind of snap to it and I can talk while we're doing it. Great. I'm going to start with the, the Barani Banjan because it has to go into the oven for a while, but I have pre-made both dishes so that I have the finished version. We don't have to wait for the oven, but we at least have to get them cooking. So uh, we're going to start. I've got three uh, teaspoons of salt or of diced garlic. This is probably going to steam a little bit. It's going to put a little bit of water in my pan because you really don't need to use you really don't need to use oil. Sorry, that's probably really loud. You really don't need to use oil to saute your vegetables, your garlic, or your onions, mushrooms, all of that kind of stuff. Water works just as well. So that was three teaspoons of garlic. I have one can. This little stove top burner just gets a little too hot. That was one can of crushed tomatoes. And uh, this is no salt added crushed tomatoes. A tablespoon of tomato paste. And that really, the tomato paste is really, it really boosts the flavor and the depth of the flavor. And it really soaks into the eggplant well. And I have a half teaspoon of turmeric and one teaspoon of low sodium tamari. But that's completely optional. If you're oil free, you don't have to put that in there because the tomatoes, the tomato paste is really uh, a punchy flavor. So um, that will still give you a lot of depth of flavor. And then one third of a cup 
or I can't remember, is it one half? Maybe it's a half, but it's all on the recipes, the amounts of everything. So that has to cook. This is gonna cook for just a few minutes just to get rid of some of that raw garlic flavor and to thicken the sauce a little bit. And I already have here uh, my eggplant. This was one large eggplant that I sliced. And if you can see, it's about, it's between a quarter and a half inch thick. And I put them on a baking tray with a piece of parchment paper. Do you yeah. use the regular eggplant? You know, there's that there's that longer, skinny, lighter purple one that's so pretty. I think it's called Chinese eggplant. Yeah, those are delicious too. I use just the regular ones because you can pretty much get them anywhere. I find that those little ones are, you know, a, li a little less available just at your regular grocer. But if you want, if you have those, by all means, use them because they're so tender. The bigger ones, you know, they take a little bit longer to cook. And I feel like the flesh is a, a little bit firmer. But either one will work in this recipe. You just have to, you know, use more of the smaller ones. So I pre so I pre baked those on a piece of or on a baking tray with a piece of parchment for uh, what was it 20, 15 to twenty minutes, just to kind of wick out some of that moisture so that it doesn't add moisture to the dish. And what you're going to need you're going to need a casserole dish uh, that has a lid because it's going to you know, cook and steam at the same time. Move these out of the way here. All right, scoop my burner over a little bit. Yikes, that thing's hot. All right. So the cookbook, while this is cooking, I'll talk a little bit about the cookbook. So we added more, our first cookbook had 100 recipes. This one has 112 recipes um, and Let's see. So Gregor wrote the foreword, which we are so psyched about. It's awesome. Uh, and then we have some guest articles from Dr. Gregor. Sorry, did I not say Gregor? <laughs> he said Gregor. That's okay. We oh, knew who Dr. Gregor. Everybody knows Dr. Gregor. Uh, then there's an article from Nelson Campbell from Plant Pure about climate. There's an article from Robbie and Cyrus from um, Cure, oh, Mastering. Mastering Diabetes. And then there's also an article from Doug Evans about sprouting. So we got all of those in there. And then we also have uh, sprinkled throughout the book are some of our viewers' success stories. So that was a really, really great, exciting thing for us and, and for our viewers uh, to be included in the book. So that is available for pre-order now. It's going to ship out in July. Um, and our so our ebook. And our Kindle will be available very shortly, uh, probably within, week. you know, a week. Do you happen to have a copy you could hold up? I don't. They haven't sent us anything yet because it hasn't even been through the printer yet. They're not done yet. So that's why we're doing pre-order so that if they sell out really quick, then we can quick put in an, another order because we can only do, you know, a certain amount at a time because it's funded by us. <laughs> So that's that. Okay, I'm going to get this going here. The eggplant dish. Oh, yeah. So the cookbook each. So every recipe has a full color photo so that you know exactly what the dish is going to look like. Because we take the picture right after I make it. We don't really zhuzh it up or, you know, decorate it really fancy or, or take special time. After we film, we take that photo. So it's pretty much what the result that you're gonna to get to. Um, and there's also a QR code on each page that takes you to the video of me making it so that if you get stuck and you, you have a question, you can refer to the video and watch me do it and cook along with me. That's cool. That's, and yeah, as far as we know, we're the only cookbook that's done this so far. So yeah, yes. <laughs> All right, so what I'm doing with the eggplant, I'm going to actually, I'm going to put, turn my burner off here, and put just a couple ladles of the sauce in the bottom of the pan, just so that the eggplant doesn't stick to the bottom. Then I'm going to layer the eggplant in the bottom, just one layer at a time, just cover, fully cover the bottom. And then you want to put a couple scoops. Just ladle lightly over the eggplant 
and kind of smooth it around. And then you put another layer and you just keep doing that until all of your eggplant is used up. You don't wanna to put too, too many layers of eggplant together. You really wanna separate each eggplant layer with the sauce so that that sauce really cooks into the eggplant. And once you taste it, you'll understand why, because it's so rich and the eggplant turns into this really pillowy, creamy, oh, it's, I love, love it. And I'm not a huge fan of eggplant, but when I had this dish, whoo, I was in love. I think part of it's that tomato sauce. I love really garlicky tomato sauce. All right, so there we go. I'm even gonna put in the little end pieces. Those are okay. And put the rest of the sauce on the top. Okay. I wanna help out that part. Okay, so now I'm just gonna put this, the lid on and I'm gonna put it in the oven. It's already preheated on 400 degrees for 45 minutes. We don't know. So uh, those, can I just push them up maybe up there? My assistant here is gonna get me ready for my magic cookie bar <laughs> in the oven. <laughs> You're done with the burner too? Yes. All right, so this is what we're going to make next. We're going to make these guys, the magic cookie bars, which are just amazing. They're super simple, very low in sugars. And if you know anything about the magic cookie bars, they are uh, usually they're made, I think it's like sweetened condensed milk. It's all the stuff you don't want to be eating. So of course, this is one that I needed to tackle. Yeah. How do you do this? Like, what's your thought process? Like, how do you figure this out? I don't know. I think I see recipes. I'm constantly scouring Pinterest. I love to look at food photos, you know, just like everybody, you know, browse through cookbooks. And if I see something that interests me, I'm like, you know what? I bet you I can make that. Or we use our community, our, our supporting community, I have a vote every month where they get to vote on, or I, I have an idea wall where I keep all of these things that I kind of have thoughts about making. And I let them vote on those to see what their interests are. And then I make whatever, you know, the, the top two usually that, that win are the ones that I work on next. And I try to get it out on the show as, as quick as I can. But yeah, that, that's it. I just, I, you know, basically look at a recipe and I just think, you know, I'm pretty sure that that would translate and I can make that work with whole food ingredients with, you know, no oil, no sugar, no refined flour, all of that kind of stuff. And it most of the time works. <laughs> there's, there's times when I'll work on a recipe several times and it's just not coming together, which is really frustrating, but it does happen. <laughs> like which ones have you not yet nailed? Uh, well, I just got done with my cinnamon roll one, which is a whole, you know, I wanted to do it gluten-free because almost all of our recipes are gluten-free and it just wasn't happening. And I've worked on it for years and, you know, the no sugar thing, I was using date paste and it just, it just wasn't tasting like what I remember or close enough to what I remember. Cause my mom is a huge cinnamon roll baker. So I'm very picky when it comes to cinnamon rolls. So I finally got that one down recently. Um, the egg one, the just egg mixture, boy, that was that was frustrating because I don't use, uh, I try not to use nonstick cookware anymore. So getting that to work without using nonstick cookware is almost impossible. And I don't know why I didn't think the whole time I, I just kept trying and I have a, uh, I have a carbon steel pan that I that I've you know, it's this well seasoned, but it just glued itself to it. And then I realized, you know, I, I pretty much bake everything else. Why am I not trying to bake this? And I baked it and bam, it worked. It's like oh, all this time I've spent weeks and weeks and how many recipes have I thrown out because they were so bad or, you know, scraped off of my griddle because it just didn't work. Yeah. What do you, what do, you do with them? 
the ones that, that, that are not the, not just right, do you still eat them or do you give them away? Sometimes. Sometimes if they taste good and they just look terrible, we eat them. But a lot of times it goes in the garbage. And I, I feel bad. I don't like to throw away food. So the oh, the mushroom stroganoff. Oh my gosh. And it's such a simple recipe, but I was trying to do it nut free and all of these different, you know, allergen free types of stuff. It was a disaster. So I finally went back to, you know, I used some cashews and oats and, and, and it, it's wonderful. And it's probably one of our most popular shows. So, <laughs> okay. So I'm, I'm going to get going on these magic cookie bars. Uh, so it is a cup of almond flour, a cup of oats, rolled oats. And I want to stress, look at your oats, try if you can to buy organic oats because that has been all over the news about the glyphosate, you know, sprayed on different crops and stuff. And oats happen to be one of them. So if you can at all get organic oats, I would highly suggest that. Then I have, uh, let's see, I don't have the recipe out here. I believe this is, it's either a half a cup or a third of a cup. But like I said, it'll be on on the printable recipe. Um, a, jewel, or a pit of dates and a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And then, oops, where did that go? And then just a little bit of water. It's probably between a teaspoon and two teaspoons. I'm just gonna start with just a little cause it really helps it along to stick together better. Okay. Have you and tried vanilla my powder? My magic bullet, what'd you say? I was wondering if you ever tried vanilla powder. I have, but I, I haven't found one that I really liked or that I felt had a good flavor to it. So I'm still searching for that one. I'll keep trying. I'm just gonna pulse this uh, until it starts sticking together because that's what we're gonna press into the bottom of our pan. That looks about good. Let's see here. Oops. Yeah. All right. Looks like it needs probably just a couple more little pulses just to get it a little more stuck together. And it doesn't have to be super stuck together. It can still be a little bit crumbly because the mixture that's going to go on top is very liquidy and it kind of soaks down into it a bit. So just a little bit more. That looks better. All right, so I have a brownie pan here, which is just like eight and a half or nine by nine. And I put a piece of parchment down in there. And just a tip for your parchment paper, if you're using parchment, uh, it really helps to, to wad it up really tight and then to stretch it back out, it's easier to mold into your pan. And you can even sprinkle a little bit of water on it. It helps to just get it to form a little bit better. All right, so I'm just gonna press this down pretty tight down into the bottom of the pan. And by pressing it too, that's getting it to kind of stick together a bit, a bit better. Okay, so now on to, oops, I guess I need that same container to the liquid layer. And that's the part that's typically like condensed milk and sugar and all kinds of stuff. So this is a half a cup of rolled oats, third of a cup, Oops, a pitted dates. Oh, I forgot. Oh, the, that's right. The ingredient in the crust, it wasn't vanilla extract. I'm sorry. It's a half teaspoon of low sodium tamari just to give it a little bit of, that's a little bit of saltiness. This is where the vanilla is. One teaspoon of vanilla extract. And I got a cup of water. 
I mean, see how simple that is? There's hardly anything to this. The ingredients are really simple and it comes out just so delicious. It's really, really surprising. All right, so I'm just gonna uh, blend this until the dates are completely pulverized. Okay, and then we're just gonna pour that over, if you can see where I'm at there, pour it over the pan or over that crust layer. And it seems watery, but that is okay. It really needs to be, to get everything to stick together. It kind of just soaks into each layer. All right, then I have the toppings, which are, this is a cup of pecans that I just lightly roasted, just to bring out some of that flavor a half a cup of, these are unsweetened chocolate chips that we get from, is it Carolina or not? I'm sorry, Carolina. Cal Santa Barbara? Yeah, yeah, Santa Barbara. So it's an unsweetened chocolate chips, but you could also use, if you're, you're not worried about the chocolate chip part, there's uh, a few different brands uh, in like Whole Foods or Sprouts uh, that are vegan chocolate chips. So this part you're just sprinkling Oh, and, and I'm sorry, and a half a cup of finely uh, shredded coconut, unsweetened coconut. So we're just sprinkling that over that liquid mixture. And do it each one, one at a time. And then I usually do the pecans on the top because I think they're they're the prettiest. And I like to get that little toasty toastiness on the top. Okay. And then the final thing you want to do, you kind of want to just press down lightly, you know, with the flat of your hand, just to get those ingredients kind of pushed down into the liquid a little bit, or else when you cut them, all of those toppings just kind of crumble off. Okay. All right, so that's it for that. And then it goes into the oven at 350 for about 25 to 35 minutes. And you'll just have to check it at 25 to make sure that your nuts are not burning. So I'm gonna flip that in really quick. There's a question. What is the brand of your little blender? Uh, I have a, the Nutribullet Pro. I don't know if you can see that from here. It's, 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 oh, I can't get the cord to come out that far. Let me just hold it up. Which way is that? <laughs> it's the Nutribullet Pro. And I believe that so you'll have to just read the details because a lot of the different Nutribullets have different wattage of the engine. And I think this one is... It's either that's, a thousand or 1200. 12, 1200, yeah, it's a big 1200 watts, which is very important because when you're making stuff, especially like this next little thing I'm going to make is the sauce or the uh, birani, um, and it uses cashews. You, want this? you can also soak your cashews if you want to get a creamier result. Uh, yeah, if you want to bring that over. Um, but if you want, if you don't want to soak your nuts all of the time, before you use them or before you blend them, you need a powerful blender to be able to get all of that graininess out of the nut to be able to pulverize them very, very well. Okay, so this is the finished result of the Barani Bonjon. You can see it's still steaming hot. Now I'm gonna show you the top or the sauce that goes on the top. All right, we're gonna use our Nutribullet again. Got a quarter of a cup of cashews, just raw cashews. Gosh, I wish I would have printed out my recipe. What's the amount? I think it's a third of a cup of water. Tablespoon of white wine vinegar and two teaspoons of lemon juice. 
which that doesn't sound like a great combination, right? It sounds like that would be really, really tart, which it kind of is, but the, this sauce is typically a yogurt type of sauce. So this is how we're getting around not using the yogurt and not using some like store-bought plant-based yogurt because I'd rather go from just plain ingredients with no fillers and all of that kind of stuff. So now we're just gonna blend this until it's really creamy. So I don't know why the new Magic Bullet Pro, this is my old container. No, it worked today, it worked this morning. All right, I pre-made another one so I would have a second batch for our other thing. I'm just gonna blend that one up a little bit too, again. And then for the, the, the ingredient that I think is one of the most important ingredients is mint, chopped mint. A lot of Afghani recipes, especially main dishes, there's always fresh chopped mint sprinkled on top which does not sound like it would go together, but when you eat it together and with the yolk, this, you know, yogurt sauce, the flavors just blow your mind. And I think too, you know, because this is really, it's got a lot of garlic in it. So, you know, that can give you a gassy stomach, but I think that's partly, you know, the mint can help help with that. And it helps, you know, with your digestion. All right, I'm just gonna blitz this a little bit. There we go. Super simple. And I just love this dish. It's such an easy dish and it's so full of flavor. You can have it simply, you know, you can serve it with, a, you know, a side of a, a rice dish or some sweet potatoes, you know, it pretty much goes with, with anything like that. I'm just going to put a little there, kind of drizzle a little bit of my yogurt sauce and a little bit of mint. Yum, yum, yum. I gotta try it. But I already know what it tastes like, so. And I guess I know what we're going to be having for dinner. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. These two together, the mint and the yogurt sauce and the tomato. Mm. There's so many different flavors going on and they magically all go together. I just can't believe it. I, I know. Can't you're, so you're, sure. you're incredible. I, I wish you could come <laughs> over and make me something. <laughs> 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 yeah it would be nice to live closer i wouldn't mind living in california <laughs> why don't you your kids are grown no way you've seen what's happening in the weather right <laughs> i think i'm avoiding florida and california oh that's funny all right so here's our magic cookie bars oh and one more one more thing one of the other things i love to do is sewing i abs i've been sewing since i was eight years old and I always make my aprons for the show. And people always ask me, you know, do you sell them or do you have more? So we decided just recently that we we're going to put up a page on our website uh, to have some of my aprons available. And this is the one you can see. This is the one that's going to be available very shortly. Sunday. Soon. Yeah, Sunday. probably within oh, on Sunday. So even though, you know, it would miss Mother's Day, it would be a great Mother's Day gift <laughs> or Christmas or birthday. 
So I will be making as many as I can. And when they're gone, they're gone. <laughs> and I'll see if I want to make more. So there's that. You are multi-talented. All right. And here, I'm going to cut one of these out. The magic cookie bars. Let's see it. And you didn't even need the sweetened condensed milk that's in the original recipe. No, not at all. And I, I think that's probably why I wasn't a huge fan of them before. Because they're just sickeningly sweet. They're so really? sweet, you can't even eat them. But this is not. You can see. Get it real closer. That, looks, so that looks like the real thing. Yeah, and I mean... I like them just because they're not as sweet as the original version. Yeah. How, how long have you been eating this way? Because, you know, it's funny because when you say, well, I want them to taste like things like it, I remember, I don't even remember what things taste like anymore. I do struggle with that now because I'll see a recipe and I'm like, wow, it's been so long since I had A, B, or C. I don't know if I could replicate that or some recipes that aren't like there's no version of them, uh, no vegan version of them out there in the world. I kind of have to guess a little bit on those. Yeah, I think the longer you're away from it, you you know, you don't remember it. That's why it's right. good for people because they can get over their food addictions and stuff when they find delicious recipes like yours. It doesn't have to taste exactly the same as long as it tastes good. Right. I use I use my family and my extended family a lot. I'll make something for them and I'll just ask them honestly, what do you think? Does this taste like what, you know, close to the original recipe or taste like something you remember, or do you even like it? Because my mom uh, or my, a lot of my family are not plant-based. So using them as an experiment to see what people that, that aren't already eating plant-based, how is, how is their experience, right? I'm pretty, pretty good. I, I mean, I think they're pretty happy with almost everything that I've made for them. My dad's a little tougher. He's a little bit more traditional. And if it doesn't taste just like what his, his grandma made, <laughs> I'm like, okay, but I'm not using ham hocks or bacon grease, or it's not going to taste exactly the same. Oh but overall, I think I'm getting a pretty good pretty good response and all of viewers of course there's so much great feedback you know when they make something they'll take pictures and send it to me and that that's always that makes me so happy that is great do you have any other uh, recipes that you're working on that you can tell us about converting favorites to see healthy? yeah we're we're uh, next week or on Sunday we're doing our um, creamy uh ice cream episode. So we're doing a chocolate and a strawberry, which if you don't have that cr ninja creamy machine. I know people think oh, like we can get money for telling you, no, it's just, I, it's just the best. It really amazing. is the best. And I'm, and I'm, I'm telling you, honestly, we have no affiliation with them. I am a, a, an appliance avoider. I have the basics and I'd kind of just stick with that. I don't like collecting or having a certain appliance for, for every particular type of cooking because that drives me crazy. I don't like to have my countertop full of stuff. It's already full of stuff. Uh, or my pantry just full of appliances that just sit there most of the time. I think it's crazy. And uh, my friend Kim Campbell actually from Plant Pure had one. And she just kept saying, you need to get one. You need to get one. I said, Kim, I don't want another appliance. I'm perfectly happy with my nice cream. And she said, oh, you don't, you just don't even know. So I was out at her house one day and she made me some of the ice cream with that machine. I'm telling you, I was, I was shocked. I couldn't understand how, you know, it's like three or four very simple ingredients made ice cream as smooth and creamy as haagen -Dazs. I still don't understand it. So I it's said, Paco okay, Jet technology. I don't know if you ever heard of the Paco Jet. No. Okay. So, so we, I have a friend, Chef Eric Lachester. He's the uh, chefs for celebrities in LA. He used to have a restaurant there. And when he had his restaurant, it, he had this Paco Jet, but it was $4,000. And it was it, basically what the Ninja Creamy is, is when it went off patent, they took the Paco Jet technology for us home 
you know, cooks. And that's why it's just people don't understand a Vitamix cannot do what what the Ninja Creamy really can. can. And, and neither can the bullet and neither can the whatever. And then I don't know what the other ones are called. The, the, that, that one that's like $39. Or real bananas. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just, this is surreal this is, scoopable ice cream. Yes. And it's solid. Like you can put it on an ice cream cone. Like you can't put nice cream on an ice cream no, cone. You cannot you do know? that. Or you Absolutely. can't make like a banana split, you know, where you need to have kind of solid Yes. Thank you. And you can't, you can't refreeze anything you make in a Yonanas or a Vitamix, but what's great about the Ninja Cream is you don't finish it. You spin it and just put it back and spin it. Exactly. Again. Yeah. It, ours never, we never have any remaining. I know that's the thing is, is you but never have anything. Two, so it's perfect for Jeff and I, but yeah, if, if one of us isn't feeling like ice cream that night, which is very rare. Uh, yeah. That cup just goes right back into the freezer. But yeah. That is just Excellent. Cause yeah, nice cream, you have to eat it right away. You know, as soon as you scoop it, literally, you know, cause it's already melting this stuff, even it holds up for a little while. So I I'm in love. I love this machine. So that I'm that's what we're so glad to hear. Next you say show. That. And then our one, one of the next uh, recipes that I'm going to be working on, cause it was the, the winning vote for this month from our supporting members is, uh, sliceable shreddable gouda cheese oh we'll see <laughs> i got my fingers crossed that one might take me a little while too that's, that's incredible um rebecca who's watching live wants to know if you ever dehydrated hummus for travel and if so do you have any tips oh that is genius i've never even heard of drying hummus so that you would have it in a dried pack and probably just add water and stir. Yeah, because because you actually sometimes can't get it through TSA depending on which agent you have. It's like one of those gray areas sometimes. Right. Yeah, we've, sometimes we've actually done don't. that before, and they they took it. Which, yeah. So I, I learned about it from John Pierre years ago. And Lisa Maris of Raw Food Romance says that they have these trays for the Excalibur or any dehydrator where they have a little bit of a lip. And so it's pretty easy to dehydrate. And then, you know, then you just crumble it. And like you say, you just add water at your destination. Oh gosh, I'm going to try that for sure. I, I've never, I've never even thought about that, but that is a genius idea. Cause yeah, you could take that on the plane and then just get some water from them. Yep. Absolutely. Or it's your, yeah. Isn't that cool? Yeah. That's great. Cause yeah, that's so frustrating because we we've tried it, you know, a couple different times trying to get that through. So we have a snack on the plane. Nope. Yep. Like, every time. And I'm See? like, it's not a liquid. No, it's not. It's like, it's a semi, I know. It's a, how are you going to blow up a plane with yeah, I'm like, oh gosh, come uh, on. What do you want for mother's day this year? Someone's asking. Wow. That's a great question. I don't know. Yeah, pizza. Jeff always says pizza. That solves <laughs> almost everything for me. That's funny. That... Uh, our kids are moved out. So it's just Jeff and I. That's a great question. I don't know. I think just a nice sunny, nice weather day that we can go out for a nice walk and get a pizza at night, watch a good movie. And I'm good. Yep. Easy to please. And have some creamy ice cream. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. absolutely. What kind of shows do you guys enjoy watching? Oh gosh, what's our latest? Evil is one of our favorites right now. Uh, it's on, is that Hulu? Oh, it's on Paramount. Uh, and our other favorite show, Elementary. We absolutely love that show uh, with Infringe with uh, Lucy Liu. She's awesome. So yeah, we don't, we're not really into any of the newer stuff. It just hasn't appealed to us at all. So we just keep going back to the stuff that we've watched or the good fight i love the good fight i think we're probably going to start re-watching that one again too because there's what seven seasons or something cool have you ever tried to do like uh recreations of like seafood type based recipes like you know chipino or bouillabaisse anything like that hmm. there was one what did i make oh i made a oh what was that one called the bowl from that restaurant the the bowl with the eggplant and tofu and it's a from new hope yeah it's a noodle bowl that this restaurant um pretty close to us makes uh and it's got kimchi eggplant uh grilled tofu noodles and then uh some yeah some seaweed but i think typically it uses like oyster sauce you know, like the, the very traditional uh, version would be. 
uh, yeah, so we went to, we used to go to this restaurant all the time and get, and my husband and kids would always get that bowl. So we knew we had to recreate that one because it's a delicious, his version is de delicious, but it's very oily and it's very, very, very salty. So we made a, a bit lighter version of that, but other than tuna other, fish. yeah, I made a mock tuna fish. Yeah, yeah you made that on my show. I think that was the first yeah, time that's I read right. you. That yeah. was one of the first ones. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Other than that, yeah, I don't have a lot of um like Asian dishes fish. or fish, you know, fish based kind of dishes. Uh although Jeff would really love it. I guess that's just not my my area of expertise. It's more his, so it's hard for me to know if I'm anywhere close, although I am working on a faux bowl. Uh I'm wow. working on that, but I, I didn't eat them before. So taste wise, I'm a little bit in the dark. <laughs> I know what you mean. It's, it, I know what you mean about that. If you've never, how do you know, how do you make something you've never tasted or, you know? Right, right. I use Jeff a lot. He's, he's had them before and, you know, he'll tell me if it's close or what he thinks it needs. But yeah, that, those are challenging for me. And because I don't, I don't usually enjoy them much. So even if I taste it, I'm like, well, it tastes all right to me, but you know, it's not something I would choose to eat. So, yeah. Well, that that's our, that's it. We, we're done with our. I wish you every success with the book. Can, can, can you, so if, is this a, if, is this why a traditional publisher, can you be a New York Times bestseller with this? I don't think so. We're with a hybrid publisher. Okay. So they did the final editing and the, you know, they're doing the, printing. the printing and distribution. Um, so yeah, and we're not going to be selling on Amazon. We're going through their company through mascot. Oh, that's interesting. So it will never, that's good to know. So it won't ever be available on Amazon. Well, we, we don't know <laughs> in time, just the Kindle and the app uh, and the Apple book, the ebook, um, which will be available within a couple of weeks. No, no, Amazon. But, oh, not through Amazon. No, the book. Oh yeah. The book, the won't, yeah, it won't be through Amazon. We did that with our first cookbook. And we got a good response, but when all is said and done, after you get done paying the publisher and Amazon, I mean, Amazon takes, I think it was 50%. It was crazy. So I think we end up making just a little over a dollar a cookbook. Yep. That's about that people, much work. I know. And some people make less, believe it or not. People think, oh, oh it's too much terrible. money. You got to sell a million copies if you're going to. Yeah. So yeah. we're like, you know what, let's just try this because Jeff. You know, he has a, a background in web development and, and design and all of hey, that kind of stuff. Hi, Jeff. Hello. He could do most of the things that we needed to do. So we, we thought, well, let's let's just try it. Well, good for yeah, you. Hybrid, hybrid publishers, I think, are really kind of the way to go for folks like us, where you have an audience and you're just trying to make a book for them. Um, so we can sell directly to our audience through the publisher, through their distribution. And we get to do most of it ourselves. So we get to design the whole book. You know, if we wrote and took all the photos and we get to pick the materials, how the book is made. We did a soft cover uh, lay flat binding, which is awesome. So it, it will truly just like lay flat on the counter without paperweights or anything, um, which our first book wouldn't do. We, we didn't have it as an option. Um, so I, yeah, the, the hybrid stuff is, it is a lot of work for the authors initially, but I think longer term, it's like, you know, we can make actually make some money from the book and have more control over it too, so. Well, I wish you every success. You got a lot of fans here. Susan, the realtor says, we love Jill. What is Jeffrey Chap liver? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but the lay flat thing is great because it's it, that it's just so annoying when it, like you say, you, you got to put like, you yes. know, like a, a weight on it when you're looking at the recipe. But what's great is the the, the QR code on yours is, fan, is such a great idea. Yeah. Hey, we were watching your interview with uh, Dr. Gregor about his new book. And he was saying yep. that the, the book is linked to a bunch of videos because they couldn't fit them all in the book. And we were so happy to hear that. It's like yeah. making a book into a multimedia experience where you can just scan something and watch a video. I think that's what, you know, cookbooks, it's really like a new thing. You know, I think our, our book was one of the first ones ever do it. So. I know, but well, that's just yeah, such for, a cool for learning. I mean, some people learn audio, some people learn visually or tactile, you know, it kind of covers all the bases. So yeah. yeah, if you're needing extra help, yeah, we tried to just cover all the bases. <laughs> 
Uh, that's great. I wish we could get your food in person, though. That's the only. That's the only. Experience. Someday. 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 <laughs> that's the only experience you haven't covered. <laughs> we, you know, our our dream is actually to create a franchise where you could have a whole food plant based. It's our recipes, so you could come into a, a place, you could try them, and then you could learn how to make them at home, and have that be like a franchisable thing all over the world. I, we'd love at some point yeah. to do that. So if there's well, any. That would- be amazing you know, or even welcome. just a recipe where you could get your recipes you know i mean just could you imagine if there was a chain of like that one dalton's diner yeah, right there you go. right yeah. exactly yeah we, I mean, yeah, we wanted here. to be a sit down type of place too or you can come in and we thought you know we could have like pre-made dinners for for four you know and you can freeze them whatever all yeah. you need is somebody with a lot of money. Exactly, <laughs> right? And that's not us. <laughs> I mean, like, you know, John Mackey just opened a restaurant in LA and, and it's I'm sure it's great, but like somebody like that, why can't they just franchise you? Yeah, people love Dalton's Diner. I love it too. Yeah, yeah that, that's a, I like that too. Yeah, all right. Well, let's let's manifest this. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's start visualizing this. Hey, it's possible, you know? <laughs> all right you guys are great i wish you every success i'm going to pre-order the book so guys you do so as well there's a link in the chat it's in the show note come on you know they give so much the recipes they do so much for everyone it's, it's time to a little payback guys oh, thank you thank you all thank right you. thank you guys so much it's so great to see you your recipes are incredible <laughs> and thanks all of you for watching another episode of chef aj live please come back 11 it's food addiction friday with dr joe nifflin bye jill bye jeffrey